welcome to Coding Kids. Today I will show you how to create the game Catch the Fruit. First, let's have a look at what happens in this game when we play it. The player controls the ball by pressing the left and right arrow keys. Different pieces of fruit glide down the screen automatically, meaning they are not controlled by the player. The player can move the ball to catch the fruit. If the ball catches a piece of fruit, our fruit score increases by one. If we drop a piece of fruit, the game ends and the backdrop changes to Game Over. If we catch all the fruit, the game ends and the backdrop changes to You Win. Now, let's build this game. There are five parts to this game. One, the bowl. Two, the fruit. Three, variables. Four, You Win. Five, Game Over. Now, let's start building one step at a time. First, let's start with a brand new project by clicking the Create button on the home page. You will see a new project open with the cat as the default sprite. A sprite is a character or object we use in making computer programs. For step one, we want to add a bowl sprite. Right click on the cat sprite and press delete. To import a new sprite, we can click on the miniature sprite icon and select a sprite from the sprite library. I have selected the bowl sprite. Now we want to add code to our bowl sprite. To begin our code, we need an events block. Go to events and select the when green flag clicked block. This means we will start our game when the green flag is clicked. Now place the sprite at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. We want to make our bowl move left and right. To move our bowl left and right, we will use the left and right arrow keys. We have already selected the when green flag clicked block for when the movement should start, so we shouldn't use the when space key pressed block for the arrow keys. Instead, we use the if then block. Go to the control tab and drag two if then blocks into the workspace. Now to make our bowl move left and right, go to the sensing tab and select key space pressed. Add one of these into the top of each if then block. To move with the left and right arrow keys, we change space to left arrow and right arrow. Since we are moving left and right, this means we are moving along the X axis. So we need the change X by 10 block. Drag two of these into the workspace and add to your if then blocks. Remember to change 10 to negative 10 for left. Finally, we need to add a forever loop. Find this in the control tab. This means the computer will continue checking this condition. Now, let's try it. It works. For step two, we want to add fruit sprites to our game. Click on the miniature sprite icon again to import some new sprites. I'm going to choose four fruits. I have chosen an apple, a banana, an orange and a watermelon sprite, but you can choose any type of sprite you like. Now, let's add code to our sprites. I will begin with the apple sprite. First, we need an events block. So, go to events and select the when green flag clicked block. For this game, we want to make our apple sprite begin in the same position at the start of each game. We can do this with the go to block in the motion category. Move your sprite to the position you wish it to start at, at the top of the screen. The Go To block records this position. Now you can drag the Go To block into your workspace and add it to your code. When we start the game, we want our apple to be hidden before showing. This gives the player time to prepare. We can do this using the Hide and Show blocks. You can find these in the Looks tab. Drag them into your workspace, placing the Hide block first. To make the apple stay hidden before showing, use the wait one sex block. Find this in the looks category and add it to your hide block. Now we want to add motion to our apple so it falls down the screen. However, we don't just want our apple to move downwards. We want it to zigzag as it falls. To zigzag on the way down, we need to move to one side, move down, move to the other side and move down again. We can do this using the change Y by 10 and change X by 10 blocks in the motion category. Drag two of each of these blocks into your workspace. We want to place them X, Y, X, Y. For the Y blocks, change the 10 
to minus 10, so it will move downwards. I want my apple to move more slowly, so I will change the minus 10 to minus 5. To make the apple move left and right, change the 10 in the x blocks to 5 and minus 5 for movement right and left. To make these motions slower, we can use the wait one sex block. Find this block in the control category and add it to each change y block. We don't want it to be too slow, so change one sex to 0.1 sex. Finally, we need a forever loop, so these conditions are constantly checked. Find this in the control tab and place it around your change x by and change y by blocks. Let's try it now. It works! We need to code the other sprites now. We can do this quickly by dragging this block of code onto each of the fruit sprites. We just need to change the position and timing of the fruits. Select another fruit sprite. The first thing we want to do is to choose a position. Drag the fruit to the position you want it to start at. If you look to the top right hand corner of your workspace, you will be able to see a value for x and a value for y. These are the x and y coordinates of the sprite. Now, type these values into your go to block for the new position. need to change the wait one sex block. For this game, we want each fruit to fall at different times. This makes it easier for the player to win. We can do this by changing one sex. I will change it to four sex for this fruit, but you can change it to any time you like. Repeat these steps for the last two fruit sprites. We need all the positions and wait times to be unique. Let's try it again. all our fruit sprites are falling at different times. For steps 4 and 5, we want to introduce the idea of winning and losing. So, for step 3, we need to add a variable which tells the computer when we win or lose. First, we will add code to our apple sprite. To begin a new block of code, we need an events block. Drag when green flag clicked into your workspace. If the bowl catches all the fruit, you win the game. So we need to count how much fruit has been caught. To do this, we can use a variable. Go to the data tab and make a new variable. Let's call this variable fruit because it will tell us the amount of fruit that has been caught. So if the bowl catches one fruit sprite, then this fruit variable should change by one. That is, if the fruit is touching the bowl, the variable increases by one. So, we need an if-then block from the control tab. Drag this into your workspace. Now, go to the sensing category and select touching mouse pointer. Place this in the top of your if-then block. Change mouse pointer to bowl. Once the bowl catches the fruit, we want the fruit to hide. So, drag the hide block from the looks category into your if-then block. Now, if the apple is touching the bowl, the apple hides. We also want to count how much fruit has been caught. We can do this with the change fruit by one block, which is in the data category. So, when the apple is caught by the bowl, our fruit variable changes by one. Finally, we need a forever loop, so this condition is checked continuously. Drag the forever block from the control category into the workspace and place it around your if then block. Now let's check our code. It works! 
Notice how if the bowl misses the fruit, then the fruit continues to fall along the screen. We want the fruit to disappear when it reaches the bottom edge of the screen. At the bottom of the screen, the Y coordinate is minus 180. We can make a condition that checks if the Y coordinate is equal to minus 180. If so, the fruit will hide. So again, we need an if-then block. Drag this into your workspace and place it below your other if-then block inside the forever loop. To check the Y coordinate, we can use the less than sign from the operator category. Drag the less than sign block into the top of your new if-then block. Now we need the Y position from the motion category. Place this on the left side of your less than sign. We want to check if Y is less than minus 180, the coordinate at the bottom of the screen. So type minus 180 into the right side of your less than block. Now if the Y coordinate of the fruit is less than minus 180, the fruit hides. Drag the hide block from the looks category into your if then block. Now let's try it out. It works! We need to repeat these steps for the rest of the fruit sprites. Again, we can do this quickly by dragging and dropping our code onto each of the other fruit sprites. However, each time the game begins, we want the fruit variable to reset to zero. On the bowl sprite, we can use the set fruit to zero block from the data category. Place this underneath the when green flag clicked block, but outside of the forever loop. A quick test shows that our score resets. For steps four and five, we want to add you win and game over to our game. So, first we need a new backdrop. Select the miniature paintbrush icon at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Use the text tool to type the phrase you win onto your new white backdrop and title this backdrop you win. You can choose any font, color or text size you like for this. We can do the same for Game Over. Now use the text tool to type Game Over onto your backdrop and title the backdrop Game Over. For step 4, we want to add code to our You Win backdrop. In the Backdrops tab, make sure you have the You Win backdrop selected. Then click on the Scripts tab. We will begin our code with the when green flag clicked block from the events tab. When we start, the backdrop needs to reset to the plain white backdrop. So we can use the switch backdrop to you win block from the looks category. Change you win to backdrop one and add it under when green flag clicked. Now we need to add the condition for the you win backdrop. If we catch all of the four pieces of fruit, then we win the game. So we need an if then block. Drag this block into your workspace. Now we can use the variable fruit. If the variable fruit equals four, then we win. So drag the equal sign from the operators category into the top of your if then block. Now select the variable fruit and place it on the left side of the equal sign. Type four on the other side. For step 5, we need to add code to our first piece of fruit, the apple sprite. Select the apple and make sure the scripts tab is open. We lose the game when we catch less than 4 pieces of fruit. So, we need to make a condition which checks this. Let's use the timer. If I start the game and watch all the fruit fall, the game ends after about 18 seconds. So if the timer is greater than 18 seconds and the fruit variable is less than 4, we lose. Now let's add this code. First we need an if then block from the control tab. Drag this into your workspace. We have two conditions for this code so we need the and block from the operators tab. 
Now we need a less than sign and a greater than sign. Drag one of each into either side of your AND block. You can find the timer block in the sensing category. Place this on the left side of your greater than block and type 18 on the other side. For the other side, we need the fruit variable from the data category. Place this on the left of your less than block and type 4 in the other side. Now, if this occurs, we want our backdrop to change to game over. So, select the switch backdrop block from the looks category and add it to your code. Make sure the game over backdrop is selected. We also need the stop all block because if we lose, we want the game to stop. You can find this in the control section. Add this to the bottom of your code. Finally, drag this block of code into the forever loop that changes the variable fruit. Now, let's try it. It works! Enjoy playing your Catch the Fruit game!